Okay guys, let's take a look at today's lesson. Uh, we're going to be looking at a third way to compute volume. This is actually also volume by revolution. Um, but this method is called the shell method. It's really a BC only topic. Um, it, you will not be required to use this method on the AP test. It certainly is going to be an option for you. I think it's a great method and I'll explain why as we go through I'll, we'll kind of compare and contrast this with disk and washers because you're really finding the volume of the exact same three-dimensional fit object. You're just doing it with a, in a different technique. So both of the techniques on the same object should give you the same answer regardless of which one you do. So like with the other two um, volume techniques I really would like to for you to see kind of a, a visual representation of what we're looking at what is the shell method. Uh, the shell method really kind of focuses on the concept of a representative rectangle. The rectangle is going to rotate about the axis of uh, revolution. Here is our axis. So um, if we were to rotate the rectangle around we would get something like this. Um, I think even more telling would be to see the different shells. Uh, bas basically it's like the shells are nested inside of each other. It's an infinite number. Just like when we were working with the disk and washer method, they were cross sections were circles. And we thought about an infinite number of circles being inside that three dimensional figure. This technique requires us to think in a little bit of a different way. There are basically an infinite number of shells inside that same three dimensional figure. And so this is um, a representation of that. I have one more thing that we want to look at. Um, here we're going to revolve this about the axis of rotation. This line represents our representative rectangle. And we would see our shells. And they're basically, the shells would start, uh, to me, I think about them starting at the center and then working their way out. Um, so this is a, a visual representation of the shell method that we're going to be looking at today. Okay, so let's take a look at how we do this. All right, so we're going to look at um, volume by shells which really is on the, um, the theory focuses on there being a representative rectangle. This rectangle has been created by taking this cylinder, you know, slicing it down the side and opening it up. Okay, you can think of it that way. That's what this rectangle is created for. So the length of our um, solid or basically rectangle um, if you think about this being sliced and opened up, you can see that this, which was the circumference, turns into that, right? That's the circumference. So my um, length would be 2 pi r, you know, of x, whatever uh, function we're using, r of x or r of y. The height we're going to call h of x. That would simply be this piece right here. And our width, just like when we were working with disks and washers, is delta x, change in x. So the volume is going to be 2 pi r of x, h of x. And that's basically the beginnings of our formula for our shell method. So let's talk about um, vertical axis versus horizontal axis. The reason that this is an excellent method to kind of learn and get under your belt is because if we are rotating around a vertical axis with the disk and washer method we have to have an x equals y equation. Well that's not always possible. In this technique with the shell technique if we're rotating around a vertical axis we're with respect to x. It's exactly opposite of the other technique. So um, reason being here if we uh, rotate around a vertical axis, if you recall the diagram that we were just looking at, the, the representative rectangle 
was parallel to the axis of rotation, wasn't it? It was parallel and it rotated around like that. So when we are rotating about a vertical axis, our formula is going to be 2 pi integral a to b of r of x, h of x, dx. If we are about a horizontal axis, our formula is going to be 2 pi integral a to b r of y h of y dy. These next two sentences are going to be really important and that will um, demonstrate and help you know how which distance is x or r of x and which distance is h of x. So the radius is the distance between the representative rectangle and the axis of revolution. So I draw a representative rectangle every time and, and mark my distance. The distance, which is r of x, between the rectangle, representative rectangle and the axis of revolution. The height is simply the height or length of that rectangle, the height of the rectangle. So if you would like to always work in terms of x with volume, you can. Because if you have a horizontal axis, you would use discs and washers, you would be with respect to x. And if you had a vertical axis, you would use washers and you would be with respect to x. Okay? So if you always wanted to be with respect to x, you certainly could by changing techniques. Now, some students um, really have a difficult time with the shell method and, and after they learn it, they decide that they would prefer to block it. Um, I don't think that's going to happen in here. I'm sure you guys are going to love it. It's a great technique. I'm certainly going to require you to use the shell method on an assessment. And so, um, you know, the AP test is not going to require you to, but I will. So we've got to learn it. We've got to learn it. So let's take a look at our examples. We have a few examples to work and hopefully after the examples it will be um, pretty straightforward to you. So let's take a look at our first one. They want us to set up an integral expression um, used to find volume and we're going to use shells. Notice on when I was giving you formulas we didn't have like a disk washer thing combo did we? Sh the shell method takes care of open spaces by the bounds on the integral. You don't need a separate, you don't need a separate uh, formula. It takes care of spaces and I'll show you um, with these different examples. It takes care of those empty spaces by virtue of the bounds. That's how it, it handles empty spaces. You don't need a different formula for a one with a hole versus one without a hole. All right, so let's um, graph this one. We have the parent parabola shifted up one. Okay, and we're told that our interval is from 0 to 2. Okay, so, oops. So we're shifted up one, we'll be here, there, and here. All right. And we're also, um, this tells us that we have to stop at x equals 2. So that's the figure that we're working with. We're going to rotate around the y-axis. And so our representative rectangle, would it be vertical or horizontal? It's going to be vertical, right? Because it'll be parallel to the axis of rotation. So here's my representative rectangle. All right. There's two quantities we're looking for now. We're looking for r of x and h of x. So let's focus, um, let's find r of x first. r of x is measured from the axis of rotation to the representative rectangle. Now this was confusing students a little bit earlier today, and let me be clear. If your axis of revolution is the y-axis, your r is simply x. The distance, the measurement, if I measure from the x-axis to my uh, representative rectangle, isn't that distance x? Yeah, every time, every single time. 
r is going to be x if I'm measuring from a the vertical the y e basically the y axis the y axis r is always going to be x if we're on the y axis okay there's no adjustments that need to be made and I know you don't understand what I'm talking about you will in a minute when I'm talking about adjustments so if we're about the y axis it's just r equals x our height our height is the height of the representative rectangle. Okay, how do we measure that height? Yeah, just our, our function, right? The height is x squared plus 1. And so, let's write our integral. Our integral is 2 pi, and our bounds are going to be x bounds because we're with respect to x. So we go from 0 to 2, and it's r, which is x, times h, which is x squared plus 1 dx. We would take that and put it in our calculator, and we would get 37.699. Okay, that's our very first problem with shells. How are we? Are we okay? Now, if we had done this with disks, we would have had a washer, wouldn't we? we would have had a washer because we have this space in here. But the virtue of the way the equation works, the way this equation works, it takes care of that. That space is taken care of. We don't have to make an alteration for it. We don't have to take anything out. Does that make sense? We take care of it because this is bound by this height, which all these values go this way, and um, by x, so we don't have to worry about that space. Okay, there's no worries about that space. Okay? Let's look at our next one. Okay, same figure. <laughs> Working with the same figure. Now we're going to rotate <coughs> around the um, axis at x equals negative 1. Okay, my representative rectangle is parallel to the axis of rotation. Okay, so my r, I'm going to measure from the axis of rotation to the representative rectangle. That's r. Now, r isn't going to be just x now, is it? It's going to be x plus 1. I have to adjust it. I have to add some to it. So this distance was just x, but I have some additional distance that I have to take into account. So r is x plus 1. Okay, our height is the height of our representative rectangle. And what is our height going to be? Just x squared plus 1, right? It's just still the function x squared plus 1. So now let's write our integral. 2 pi integral from 0 to 2 of r, which is x plus 1, times h, which is x squared plus 1. Now I encourage you to put it in your calculator exactly like that. Don't worry about foiling, combining like terms. I mean, if you really, really want to, you can. But on the AP test, you, you, you wouldn't want to take that time and do something that's not necessary, right? You want to save that time for working something else. So I would just put it in exactly what it looks like. And then I would get my answer, which is 67.021. Now, recall, I've mentioned it before, I'll mention it again. On assessments, when we're using our calculator, I expect to see the integral, because you're going to get points for the integral, and I need the answer. Really, that's a safety net for you, because a lot of times you have the right integral, and maybe you just put it in wrong. So you would get credit for the correct integral. Of course, you would lose credit for the answer, but at least you would get partial credit. So we're always writing the expression and the answer, and that's what they want you to do on the AP test also. You have to write the integral, then the answer. Okay? Uh-huh. The shell method is taking all of these rectangles, and so this hole right here, which was created, we don't have to worry about because our bound starts at zero. See, it, it doesn't 
it, it doesn't take into account that, so we don't have to worry about the hole where we would if we were doing distant washers. Does that make sense? So this technique handles the spaces without extra um, adjustments, if that makes sense. No extra adjustment is needed. All right, let's take a look at our next ones. Um, we have oh, our old friend y equals square root of x. We're going to um, work with that and we're going to be bound by y equals 0 and x equals 4. All right, so let's draw our, our little square root of x guy. Okay, it stops at x equals 4. We are going to rotate about the line x equals 7. So this line right here. Okay, my representative rectangle, what's this orientation going to be? It's going to be vertical, right? It's going to be vertical because it's, go it's always parallel to the axis it rotates around. So here's my representative rectangle, which I think is really important to get this concept really firmly planted in your head so that you know which one is R and which one is H and how to measure them. So there's my representative rectangle, my R is measured from the axis of rotation to my representative rectangle. Okay, it's not going to be just a plane r equals x here. Again, the only time it's just a plane r equals x is when we are working with the x, rotating around the y-axis. Okay, so this is my r. Well, let's think about this for a second. This distance would be x right? This distance measured from here to here. I don't want that distance. I want this distance. How am I going to represent my r? 7 minus x. r is, yeah, r is going to be 7 minus x, okay? Right? Because I have to take 7, this distance is 7, and I take out x. All right, so that's my r. Let's work on my h. h is simply the height which is just the equation, right? Square root of x. H, h equals square root of x. All right, so let's write our integral. Notice it's 2 pi. I had some students earlier today getting confused and putting pi there. Um, which technique do we just use a pi in front of the integral? Discs and washers, right? Not shells. Shells is 2 pi. 2 pi from... Uh, again, and we're going to bind the figure with our the bounds, our lower and upper bounds. The, the shaded space goes from 0 to 4. I don't have to take out this hole because it's not included. I'm just integrating from 0 to 4 of r, which is 7 minus x, times h, which is square root of x. Okay, so I put that in my calculator. And I get 154.147. Okay, is that one okay? All right, let's look at the next one. We're using the same figure, y equals square root of x. Same kind of thing going on, so let's, let's draw that. Okay, we're still stopping at 4. <clears throat> this time we want to rotate about the line y equals 5. So this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we're using shells and we have a horizontal axis of rotation. What do my equations have to be in? In y's. They have to be y's. So I've got to go over here and change this up. So what would that be? X equals Y squared. Okay, my representative rectangle is now horizontal because it matches, it's parallel to the line of rotation. My R is measured from the line of rotation to the representative rectangle. Okay, now if we were rotating <clears throat> around the x-axis, then our r would be y. It would just be y. 
just like up here, right? We rotate around that y-axis, our r is x. If we rotate around the um, x-axis, r is y. Straightforward, all the time, every time. Okay, but we're not. We're um, measuring from y equals 5 to here. So if this space would be y, this would be 5 minus y. Okay, that's my r. My height is actually this right here. And remember, we're with respect to y. And I know that troubles some of us. If I just use y squared, I'm measuring this right here. Right? This is y squared. I need 4 minus y squared to represent the height. Okay? So height is going to be 4 minus y squared. <clears throat> and when we change the orientations and we change the variables, I understand it's very difficult to keep them straight. Very difficult. It's just got to be, um, I don't know if there's a, if you can memorize or it's really a conceptual thing. Once you have the concept down, these techniques are going to be very easy for you. Um, but it's conceptually, I know it's quite difficult to keep track of. Alright, so let's write our integral 2 pi. Now we're going to have y bounds, right? So 0 to 2. My r is 5 minus y, and my h is 4 minus y squared dy. I put all that in my calculator, and I get 142.419. 142.419. Okay? Now, this last one. And I know some of you may not want to see this, but I feel it's important to compare and contrast the two techniques. I'm going to do this last one by the shell method first, and then by the disk method. Okay? You, we are going to get the exact same answer. So the techniques will produce the same results. They are just simply two different techniques. Alright, so let's do that. Um, now the graph that I'm going to be uh, work, working with, I'm going to exaggerate it so that we can see the space. It's not going to be like really to scale. I'm just going to kind of exaggerate it so um, this would be like y equals x squared and this one would be y equals x to the one-third. These actually intersect at 0, 0 and 1, 1. So I want to take that space Let's see, we're going to rotate about the y-axis. So my representative rectangle is here, parallel to the y-axis. R is the distance from the y-axis to the representative rectangle. And what is R going to be? It's going to be x, period. We don't have to really ponder that and get upset about that. It's just x. My h is going to be the height of my representative rectangle. And here we're going to have to think back to our area days. Right? Big minus little. Big equation minus little equation will give me that height. So my height is going to be, let's see, the big equation was um, x to the one third minus the little equation was x squared. So there are all the pieces that I need to be able to write my integral. So I have 2 pi integral from 0 to 1 of x times x to the 1 third minus x squared dx. Okay, Radius times height. And that answer is 1.1219. Okay, so shell method on that comfortable? Well, as comfortable as we are, first time seeing it? Okay, so now let's take the same figure and let's use the uh, disk or washer method, depending on which way, which way we do. So I'll draw the figure again. Um, this is 1, 1, that's 0, 0. We're rotating around the y-axis. So we have to have y's. So I'm going to have to go over here and change this up. So this is going to be x equals plus minus square root of y. This is going to be x equals y cubed. Okay, so I'm going to change it to y's. 
All right, so let's recall from um, our lesson yesterday. We're going to have a disc or a washer. It's going to be a washer. So I need big R and little r, right? Okay, so big R is from the axis of rotation to the outside of the figure. This is big R, and it's going to be with respect to Y. So what can I use to measure this distance? Square root of Y, right? It's this function, just the function. My little r is measured from the axis of rotation to the inside of the figure. What is my little r going to be? Y cubed. So my integral would be pi integral from 0 to 1 of big R squared minus little r squared. I put that in my calculator and I get 1.1219. So those are the two techniques side by side on the same problem. All right, how are we with this? Ready to practice? Okay.